Hey, I'm Jesse from The Healthy Transformation. I'm Jason. Hey Jason, what are the nine most common mistakes that a beginner cyclist or beginner spin enthusiast does in their first spin class? So here are the nine most common mistakes that we see in a spin class and how we can actually fix them. First one, how to set up the bike. So we've gone over this before in a video already about how to set up the bike. So if you go to this video here, we'll show you how to do it. The next common mistake is resistance. Uh, a lot of people think that when they go on the spin bike, they just want to spin as fast as they can and that's going to burn the max amount of calories. It doesn't work that way. So you've got this big wheel. This one has it on the back. Most of them have it on the front. It's called a flywheel. And when you're doing zero resistance, it's actually the flywheel that's working. It's not your legs. So what you need to do for resistance is actually add tension on. So when we do a spin class, yes, it's okay to do a little bit of that, but 80% of your class should be with resistance on. Whether that's just a little bit, just to kind of slow the wheel down and you actually have to feel like you're riding on the road to actually climbing up a hill. So the zero resistance, is, is okay for a little bit of the class, but for the most part, you wanna have some resistance on your bike. So one thing that I see a lot in my spin classes is people's upper body moving around a ton. So the key is when you're riding is to keep your core tight and keep that upper body still. Uh, it is an all over body workout, but you do wanna keep that body as still as possible, especially when you stand and hover. So when you stand on the bike, we don't want to be doing a lot of the side to side, back and forth, back and forth. That's just wasted energy. You just want to keep that body nice and still and just power with the legs, power with the legs, power with the legs. So try and keep that upper body as still as possible. Keep that core engaged. It's going to make your ride a lot better. So what I see when I set people's bikes up or I see them in class is a lot of time they do like to have the seat really far forward. Uh, so what that does, that creates a little cramped position for them to be spinning in. You want to be able to have a nice even flow on the bike. So you don't want to be in a cramped position. You want to have the arms out, slight little bend in the elbow, and be sitting back. So you should not be in a cramped position where your knees are over top of your toes. You want to be back. So, so another one that I see is when people start to cycle, is they love to grip the handlebars. They think they're gonna fall off their bike. Don't worry, you're not gonna fall off your bike. It's gonna be okay. So what I call it is actually a death grip. So when people grab onto those bars and you can actually see the forearm muscles like tensing because they're gripping so hard. Keep those hands nice and loose. Keep everything up in, up in the upper body loose. Keep the shoulders loose. Keep the hands loose. You don't have to grip for because you're gonna fall off the bike because you're not gonna fall off the bike. Don't worry. Keep the hands nice and loose. Shoulders are loose. You'll keep it nice and relaxed and you'll feel so much better after your class. Another thing I see is when people get about three quarters of the way through the class and they've been pushing themselves hard, which is what we want, the head starts to drop. So it's like they're looking down at the ground, um, they're looking down, if you have like a speedometer on their bike, they're looking at that and their heads just dropped. Keep that head up. I like to say look about three feet in front of you, or if you feel better, you can look, look at yourself in the mirror, totally fine. But when you drop your head, what happens is you start to block off your air, because your neck's cranked and you start to block off air. So you're trying to breathe heavy when you're doing your work, but you can't because you're cutting off the air uh, with your head drop. Keep your head up. That'll keep the rest of the body in alignment and you're able to breathe and you'll be so much happier. Heads up. So with your pedal stroke, you always want to use, uh, there's main muscles that you want to use while you're doing your pedal stroke. Glutes and hamstrings and your quads. A little bit of the calves, but for the most part, you're using the big muscles and the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads. What happens is some people forget to activate their glutes and hamstrings and they're trying to use their quads to bring it up and it makes it inconsistent uh, pedal strokes. So it's almost like a clicking at the top and you're just jarring the pedals up and down. While you're riding, especially if you're using clip-ins, if you're using clip-ins, you gotta do this. So that is pulling up with your glutes and hamstrings and then driving down with the quads. 
You don't want to be pointing your toe forward. You want to keep it nice and flat. Bring it up using glutes and hamstrings and then drive it down with your quad. That'll keep a consistent pedal stroke for you. Oh, the cell phone in the spin class. That is one. Uh, <laughs> you want to make the ride enjoyable for everybody. And my thoughts on cell phones and spin class, leave them in your bag in the change room. Don't bring them into the, into the uh, spin class. That text can wait for an extra 15 minutes while you're doing your class. Don't worry. It just disrupts the class and it, you know, everybody's there wanting to spin hard, wanting to do their things, and if somebody's beside them texting, it just kind of takes away from the class. So leave the phones in the bag. So clothing is a huge part of spinning. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can go. I, to be honest, I like wearing my, my Lulu shorts and a Lulu top and moisture wicking clothing. Some people like to go a little bit more um, cycling gear and what that is is padded shorts. So you can buy actual cycling, cycling shorts that have a chamois in between your legs. And it just gives you a bit more protection. My suggestion for new cyclists is to do that. It just makes the ride a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're going for longer rides. So there's sometimes we have enduro rides, which is like an hour and a half on a spin bike. If you're doing a ride like that, I also do it when I do enduro rides, is to wear the pad, wear the chamois. And uh, you can just get one of those at like old bike shop or anything like that. But also make sure you're wearing moisture wicking clothing. You don't want to wear like cotton or polyester or anything like that. You want to wear a moisture wicking uh, fabric while you're cycling. So we've actually added a video about the proper clothing to wear. So the video is right here. Check it out. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And if you love this video, we've created a playlist with all of your questions. So check out these other videos.